Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Xavier and uh, I'm a batch five graduate. And today I will uh, walk you through a short brief uh, of uh, Flutter the app development and how it's how it's implemented. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So let me start uh, Flutter. Okay, uh, we will go through uh, for me basic things. So what's Flutter? Uh, setting up Android and Flutter, and the sample code description for the employee side, and also for the employer for or for the admin sites. So what's Flutter? Flutter is uh, an open source uh, UI. Uh, and a cross-platform framework used to create mobile applications for Android and iOS, uh, and it's uh, created by uh, Google. Um, it's a powerful and fast that uh, most traditional developments made it present for Android and iOS. Uh, and uh, it, it uses a programming language called Dart. A Dart is uh, uh, used to for the development of an app and uh, for the Flutter framework. It's designed for client developments such as for web and mobile apps. It's developed by again uh, from Google and can also be used to build server and desktop applications. It's an object oriented like Java like language, uh, class based, uh, and the C, C style syntaxes. And uh, how it's different from uh, how it's uh, Flutter or Dart, so different from native app development programming languages. So uh, for Android, we basically use Kotlin and Java, and for iOS, we use Swift. So with a one code base, Flutter will produce an app that's functional for both iOS and uh, Android platform. So it's easy to work on Flutter as uh, compared to native apps. So when you come to Flutter, everything is a widget. When compared to the native apps, what makes Flutter easy is everything in Flutter is a widget. What a widget is an application or a component um, or an interface that enables a user to perform a function or access a service or some most of popular widgets includes event counter, website visitor counter or others, for example. Sca uh, scaffold is a fully fledged widget that contains all of our app components in a flutter. Other widgets we use includes app bar that contains any of the app and uh, also buttons used in, used in event interactions also considered as a widget. So how can we set up Android Studio in flutter? I, uh, I linked some useful resources that I will share later. Uh, uh, you'll find uh, full information on the main websites for Android Studio. Uh, there, you can find it in the main website. You can download Android Studio, uh, Flutter. The, you can you can use this documentation that I will share uh, later on for the installation part. So we will we'll jump right into the development of the application. So. The application consists of different widgets or um, different uh, pages. For, uh, there is a home screen, for example. Let me let me connect my mobile phone and let me walk through that. Okay, there is a home screen. So the first thing you see when you open the app is the home screen. This home screen will uh, inquire user inputs password which is a secret key after passing this home screen you will uh, you by selecting some drop down menu you will uh, from the drop the drop down menu you will find employee and employers page so when we when we go through the employees page you get the functionality like gps coordinates uh, get location update functions and viewing map buttons then this employee page will collect 
the GPS location or coordinates of the employee and send the data, the coordinates to the smart contract that run in the previous tutorials. Then so that if the data lands on the smart contract, the employer, the employer page uh, can access the smart contract and can view coordinates in maps of the employee and uh, the transaction will proceed. So this is the overview of the mobile, the whole mobile application. So there are different dependencies for Flutter that we use. Among those are Web3, Dart, HTTP, Geolocator, URL Launcher, Location Provider, dependencies that we use. Web3 Dart is a Dart-like library used to connect with the Ethereum node um, to send transaction and interact with the smart contract. And the HTTP is a Dart-like library used to request HTTP connections with its resources. The Geolocator, it's a Flutter <clears throat> plugin um, used to retrieve data regarding GPS coordinates from the Android phone. And uh, the other is a uh, URL launcher. It's a Flutter plugin used to launch specific URLs. In the in this app, we use viewing maps buttons and others. So it's it uses for this purpose. And uh, the location, this plugin works similar to the geolocator. It's used along with the geolocator to get a precise coordinate radius. And the provider. The provider, it's a Flutter plugin um, that's used for every essential functionalities like uh, accessing um, the future values, the updates or the, the update of the location each time the transaction occurs. And the encrypt uh, plugin used to encrypt and decrypt the coordinate data that walks through the smart contract. So this is a home page of the app. Okay. Can you see my phone? Or I yes. Can... yes, we can see it. Okay. I think I can prove it just so this is a home page. When you open the app, this is where you landed first on. So it's have um, a text field. This is a type of widget admin and employee drop down menu. It's also another widget and also a login button. Also another um, widget type. So this is a home page code. So uh, first of all, uh, when we see the code, we initialize the uh, build context for the main app to build up on its surface. We start the application building by by providing uh, a function uh, a, by extending or by inheriting a class called stateless widgets. Uh, basically, stateless widgets are uh, widgets that do not require interaction with uh, with the user for the app. There is no user engagement on the app for the user. For example, in the stateless widget uh, extended class, we can include, we can include this GPS tracker text field. Um, yes, just only this GPS field, because when we touch this GPS tracker text field, mm. when we touch this GPS tracker, this is my phone, this, when we touch this, GPS tracker text field, it doesn't respond any responses because it's in the states, stateless widget. So there's no interaction for the any widgets that's written inside the stateless widgets. Um, so this is a GPS tracker demo, that is the text of the app. So this all, um, the text field, the drop down menu, admin and employee, the password and the login, all these widgets independently um, uh, resides in the stateful widget. So it's another widget type, stateful widget is another widget type that's, uh, that, that contains uh, user interaction, uh, user interaction for the app, any action widgets for the app. So when we, 
When we select the drop down menu, we can see admin and employee page. The user can interact with it. So it's it's uh, written. This widget is written in the stateful widget. In the password, the user can interact and write any password for the admin or the employee. It's also stateful widgets. And also the login part, we can interact with the login. So it's a state uh, project. So that's basically the home page. So if I go through the code, there's a drop down menu, there is an admin, there is an employee. This is just a drop down color and enabling color for the just for an interface purpose, not a back end thing. There's a back by padding. Padding for the text field, padding means, yeah, basically uh, padding from the corner of phone, how how it should be placed, the password uh, box, how it should be placed from the corner of the, that describes the, uh, it describes in the padding form. And the, all these are the colors and the padding instructions. So these all are the, just the user interface. So when we start interacting with the app, first of all, um, when it starts, if we choose an employee, if you are an employee, there is a set of password for an employee to enter. So, first of all, what this app did is, um, there must be a character. It says password must be a character. So, first of all, it will check if the password is eight characters long or not. First of all, it doesn't check it's uh, an employee is selected or an employee selected. First of all, it checks the character or the password is eight or not if it passes if the password you entered so if it's a correct password and also it's an eight it will check what you selected uh, in the drop down menu whether it's an employee or whether it's an employer so then it's it will check the password after uh, choosing after um checking the drop down it will check the password. I just, uh, I used admin admin password for the admin and anything greater than eight characters for the employee. So this, this is how we can enter for the employee and for the employer's page. So this is uh, basically all about the, the home page. So when we walk through the employee's page, um, We will we will get um, different widget types in the buttons buttons and widgets. So basically, um, there is a switch which is called a track location. When, if I open the code, basically there is a button called track location. So this button is the main thing. This button will connect the location or the employee side to the smart contrast uh, side. Uh, so when we turn on this turn location, uh, I just uh, I'm just walking through the. Uh, it it will ask us to uh, open our locations. So when we uh, open when we set set it on the track location it will display the current location that i am on or the employer is on so this is the last of the employer so this data will be sent into the smart contract and the employer can see this location and the smart contract will be executed upon which you um, set it set it the function is to be so the employer sees this location and also the smart contract have a location bound i think it's 100 meter i set it like 100 meter so if it's complied with the smart contract the location if this location is complied with the smart contract it will make a transaction uh, between the employee and the smart contract so if i go through the the, the interface yeah, just, this is a current gate current locations. So that's briefly how the smart contract and 
the locations sent that I talked about before. So the, when we come to the interface, this, is, this button will initiate current location of the employees. And this, uh, I talked about this track location and this viewing map um, button will, uh, uh, will open the, this current location, this latitude and longitude in the, in the employees side. So when we walk through um, this uh, code, the employees code. Okay. Um, this is where the widgets start. It's, it's, it's uh, written in the scaffold widget. So um, the first thing is alignment, the interface adjust the interfaces. This is the last known location. This is what this purple button um, is. Uh, so this is the uh, location accuracy. So this is where we say the location accuracy. So in the project, uh, it were it were described as the employee should have been uh, in between a hundred meter radius distance for it to be to be complied with the smart contract to take action or to be executed. So we use a geolocator and um, yeah we use a geolocator um, plugin a Flutter plugin you can install it by googling it. So what the, what what this geolocator and the location option um, plugins do is it will detect your mobile uh, android specifically and your mobile location uh, data uh, and it will check uh, if it's between uh, if if you were in some area or if if you were in some location right now so it uses that location as a pinpoint for this 100 meter radius to be complied with the smart contract. If you were, if your last location is pinpointed exactly with specific longitude and latitude, it will check, it will pinpoint that um, location and it will, it will take that pinpoint location as a center of a circle and it will find a 100 meter distance. It will circle a 100 meter distance uh, around your location. So. This location accuracy will detect if you um, if you pass this hundred meter uh, distance uh, radius, this location accuracy will be lost, or uh, it it will not send any listener for the smart contract. So it's it, the smart contract will not be executed anytime. So if you are inside the hundred meter, it will. Uh, it will send a listener for the uh, it will send a listener for this employees page then the smart contract will be if you and only if only you will be in the 100 meter radius so how the phone uh, how the phone uh, location native system and the flutter system is connected is using a geolocator and the um, position plugins of a flutter so first of all it will check if it is it's if it's uh, whether it is a track on or a track off which means sorry which means it will check for this button if it is on or if it is off so if it is on it will it will collect the longitude and the latitude that uh, you were in the last locations and it will add the coordinates to the smart contracts uh, and if it's uh, turned off it will stop updating the smart contracts at any time so that the employer exactly pinpoint where the employer is so the employee should have um, uh, should have make the this button track location on for the employer to see where the employee the employee resides in. So the other thing, this is a viewing map. So you can see the exact location using the viewing map button. So where, what, what happens when you uh, click the button is it will, it will open a Google, a Google's map and it will exactly uh, pinpoint where exactly 
your location is. So how, how, is it, how this is done is using Google Maps URL and Apple Maps URL. This Google Maps URL, basically, it's for Android users. And this Apple Maps URL is basically for Apple users. So it will, it will this is a placeholder, latitude, lat one, and loads, uh, loan one, placeholder for your current location. So what will happen when you touch the exact button uh, is it will, it will, you are in a, in a means of you are clicking this uh, link, right? So uh, this lat, latitude one and longitude one, we set it in here, the location that's collected from your phone. So it will replace this link and it will open in your own native browser uh, where the location is when you want to see it in a visual way formats. So that's pretty much it for the um, employee side. So um, for the employee side. So, so for the employer side, there is a basic, uh, there is a basic, um, the basic, so for the employee side, I will select admin and I will uh, admin admin. So there is, a, there is specifically there are two buttons, view and maps that uh, I discussed before in the employee side. Uh, it has uh, the same function as the employee side and the view employee location. When you touch this button, it will show for the employee for the employer where the last location of the employee is, so that uh, the employer can visualize exactly the latitude longitude of the um, employee. So um, all this is done. So when you come to the child's uh, page, so basically the smart contract. I will not go deep in the smart contract, but basically the smart contract will need um, the smart contract uh, will need some. Um, storage location so for normal web 2 uh, developers if you know uh, we have a backend uh, basically it's a database that can store uh, any data any data types using some storage location or some storage types but for web 3 uh, there is uh, the, there is no such thing as a database it's just a logic the background the backend is just a logic that it's run through the smart contract. So, the, the uh, if you see this employee location is the longitude and the latitude. We'll update every each time when the employee um, turns on its location. So this data ca can be stored in the uh, in in the Ethereum APIs called uh, Infura um, Gorilla. I think Gorilla is uh, the new type. Then I had. Uh, uh, I have been briefed that Infura is a little bit old or depreciated, but you can use Infura or Gorilla for the as as uh, um, if there is any to save file on the blockchain, it's uh, uh, you can use Infura in the combination with IPFS, and it's allow users to store data of uh, large files in IPFS, storing uh, um, the resultant hash values and it will solve this storage uh, location, uh, uh, unlike uh, like the Web2 developments. So you can use the endpoints or Gorilla points. I think your project is Gorilla, but you can use either endpoints um, for the smart, the smart contract to start its process. So basically, uh, as I have been, uh, uh, we'll use through the slide the plugin that we use for the Web3 connectors, Web3 darts, and HTTPs. So this 
two plugins will basically perform all the basic uh, needs for the smart contracts to be complied with or to connect this um, Flutter plugin in the um, this Flutter in the smart contract to connect this Flutter in the smart contract. So that's basically it. If you have any questions, I didn't see that you typed. Okay, Mikhail. Hello, hello. 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 Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, I have just, I, I do have just two questions. Like the first one is, uh, as I've seen from your implementation. Hello. I think we can disconnect. Why is it just me? Hello? Uh, yeah, I can continue. Yeah, you have some logic uh, on your Flutter app that checks for whether the employee is under uh, a 100 meter distance uh, radius or not. So is that supposed to be uh, the case with us? So that I was thinking that like, uh, I was thinking to send some uh, distance to the uh, to the logic on the smart contract to a function on the smart contract and which checks for whether that complies with uh, a yeah, custom made yeah, contract yeah, by yeah. the employer and the employee. So is that okay. uh, customary okay. to make it uh, okay. uh, check okay. the distance on the uh, on the flutter? Okay, basically I want this hundred accuracy in the dirt using the dirt uh, language it's not in the smart contract as you see uh, i use in the smart contract a basic latitude and longitude data transfer between the smart contract but if uh, yeah why not you can use uh, your smart uh, your solidity for this uh, accuracy uh, i think yeah you can you can you you have to do some logic like if else uh, if if this language and if this like greater than or less than this, uh, this will be this. If uh, if this happens, this happens. You can use these types of logic in your solidity program for the smart uh, contract to be complied. But in our case, uh, last batch, we I just uh, made this um, location accuracy uh, based on this employee side page, not in the smart contract. But definitely, you can. Uh, write some logic in the smart contract for this 100 meter radius accuracy. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, my next question is that uh, I have dropped off uh, when you were talking about Gorilla Inc. Can you just do a two minute recap? Um, okay. I don't think you okay. We have time, but okay. Um, Gorilla in Ethereum, uh, I used to build the back storage as uh, the storage for this uh, location coordinate location you i used this infra uh, api uh, endpoints in the rinkby testnet network so basically infra is um like a storage uh, it will be used as a storage for the coordinates since there is no database since this is web3 there is no database in the backend the backend is a logic so we need some storage location so i used infra in the pointers to store these coordinates locations or if any large file is transferred between the blockchain and the user it will be stored in this in the points and uh, i have been briefed that infra is a little bit depreciated uh, last month or this month i don't know uh, i think gorilla is uh, the new i think your project is Based on Gorilla, you can use the same principles and the logics using uh, the Gorilla, like an infra APIs. So uh, you can acquire the same results. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Mm -hmm.
Donc il faut ça. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Abel. It was a wonderful presentation. I wanted just to start by that. So I had two questions, one of which was about uh, Infura and Gorilla, and that was, uh, you already mentioned that, you already uh, said that about that. So uh, my second question would be on the logging part. So did you also use the Infura uh, endpoints to store the login passwords or did you just manage the login uh, password uh, on the smart contract? Mm, the login passwords, no. It's just a simple home page. I just the Dart uh, page to just uh, store. It's just in the app, not in the Infura or in the Gorilla. The the smart contract only holds the locations. This Gorilla or Infura will only hold this the logic that you typed. The smart contract, the logic that's in your smart contract, not uh, these passwords. No. So basically, the password is uh, being checked in the front, in the in the front, in the, front. In the web, in, yeah. the, in the mobile app, in the front end yeah. mobile application. Yeah, it's just in the front end, it's not okay. in the smart contract. Okay. okay, thanks. And can I add one more question, real quick? Okay. Uh, when uh, the, uh, it's just a basic uh, implementation question. When you turn off the start tracking uh, checkbox, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. but button is that when the actual coordinate is going to be sent to the smart contract? Or is there a time frequency in which the front end sends latitude the coordinates to the back to the smart contract? Um, basically, uh, this button, the track home button. Uh, sorry. Uh, so this track uh, location button is what connects this Flutter application to the smart contract. The it will be functional if you uh, turn it on. If it is off, it will send the last known location of the employee only. The, it will not update the current location. It will only send the last known location of the employee to the smart contract. But uh, consistently, you have to turn it on to give an, each update a time interval to be the smart contract, uh, the smart contract to be complied. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. And is this is this the code that was shared with us? I didn't see it. I I I don't know about that. Uh, yes, it uh, is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you uh, very we much. We just yes, we just removed the smart contract implementation part and uh, we shared the template so that you can be able to implement the smart contract and integrate it with your uh, Flutter application. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, okay, Andina. Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, I was like uh, going through the uh, template that we pro provided, and like when I try to uh, like toggle the uh, what is like the button to mm -hmm. like track, uh, it doesn't say anything. It just like it doesn't respond. I don't know why. Yeah, uh, my yeah. question is that: uh, Do I have to use a physical device to uh, like to get, or like, is it does it work on emulators? Um, emulators, uh, yeah, you can use an emulator, but uh, I just use a, a phone because it's easy to run the Flutter code directly using a USB. But definitely, you can use uh, an emulator. Um, in the emulator, so you uh, the emulator will be in the package of the Android Studio package. So the it's it, it have the location uh, plugins and other uh, like uh, mimicking the general uh, our general form. So you can use emulator or either. I think yeah. that's your question. And I was the, just wondering, uh, like if it was like. Uh, 
the emulator like that doesn't like make it work. But I have another question though. It, uh, it's not that important. Uh, my question is, uh, I haven't actually seen um, uh, a code like in the uh, in the code like in your like a uh, uh, provider mm -hmm. code. Uh, I was like trying to see where you've implemented um, uh, connecting with the wallet or something like that, but I haven't actually uh, able to like pinpoint it. So, is there any logic or uh, code that you can walk us through that uh, allows the mobile application to uh, connect with a wallet so that it can connect with the uh, smart contract or uh, what was like the method like you used to uh, connect with the smart contract? Can you walk us through the code? Okay, on the back end, um, I can just tell you what to use, but the, um, the connection for the wallet is just in the back end. Um, we, uh, I just used the smart contracts address, uh, specifically this private yes. ETRM key address. Then, uh, uh, okay, let me, okay. There is um, Git ABI like feature method in yeah, the yeah. provider, ch I mean, change notifier, uh, yeah. like, uh, um, program. Like, so, yeah, you have been, been uh, hard coded. I was wondering yeah. if we can make no, it like, uh, it's. It's not hard coded. Uh, first of all, uh, you will yeah. create a some. Uh, you will need some testnet Ethereum currency to make this whole application work. So yeah. first of all, you got you got uh, you got to. Uh, I think what's called uh, that gives a free currency. I don't remember, but uh, faucet uh, like yeah, we have to use faucet. some faucet to like give it some yeah. like currency okay yeah yeah you will get some faucet for the currencies for in the test network not in the main networks then yeah. um after you uh register these currencies after that you will you will use remix ide remix ID okay. to run your smart contract so when you run your smart contract uh, the uh, what do you call this uh, EVM, um the it will provide you abi.json file uh, yeah. so basically this abi.json is you gotta put it in the asset folder in the main asset folder abi json so what this abi json file is uh, about is that it will connect basically in simple words it connects this flutter d app to the functions it okay. will connect the app to the smart contract functions. For example, if in the smart contract, you have a send coordinate function in the uh, receive coordinate function. So it will be put in uh, a JSON format in here, in the ABI, uh, um, in the ABI files. So this is mainly just a connect. It will create a bond between the Flutter app and the functions that you put in the smart contract okay yeah i i get it like so the in the like parent model uh dot dart file there is this git abi so this git abi just uh fetches the uh abi json file from the assets right and yeah. the con contract addresses I, I i guess like the address of the smart contract that has been deployed so we yeah, get the, that the private address yeah so uh, what does the this like git credentials uh, function do uh, the there is a function that returns a future void mm -hmm. and, and like git credentials in the like parent no no uh, in the uh, yeah parent model dot parent main page okay um, parent model model main page, not the yeah. the yeah, the module file. Yeah, get credentials. Yeah, basically, it will, uh, like its name suggests, it's it will it will bring the all credentials like the private key, the public key for the smart contracts to be uh, executed. 
so it's it will it's it's like uh, what do we call so it's like a library uh, you can you import it from the other page not in the smart contract yeah. from the other yeah. page and it will collect those pages informations to the newly uh, updated that's in the smart contract if you so like there there is this ETH private key uh, from dot hex and we passed some uh, string to it so like the, for the from hex so is this like a string uh, a public key or yeah go yeah parent model dot okay is it, is it, is it, is it yeah. shared is this shared with you okay yeah yeah it's shared okay and which one is it gate credential method yeah mm -hmm. gate credentials method yeah, basically, Online. it's uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it will uh, all the credentials that you write on the different Dart file. That Dart file will will connect to the smart contract, and it will collect all those data. So when the data is uh, passed through the different uh, the employee page, I can, the employee page, it will await if there is a new change in the contract or in the location. Uh, that's what uh, my question is uh, not like uh, where you are right now like uh, rather in the mm. implementation yeah down here so like what is okay. this string represents like the one okay. that we passed uh for this uh method like okay. from hex yeah the i think this is the ethereum private key the smart contracts private key so yeah uh -huh. this so, uh, i think it, it's all called this get credential functions uh, yeah sorry about that so, yeah it will call this um this apparent model it will call all these functions it's just in the it will await for the web3 client for uh, i just use ring uh, infura for the asset storage for the locations so yeah. it will run this web3 clients all together like it's uh, basically so is it a, a, a private key of an employee? It's a private key for the smart contract, not an a employee. private key. Oh, okay. Yeah, all, uh, transaction, all transaction is transferred between the smart contract. This application is made so that all the transactions uh, flow through the smart contract not uh, the employee side so uh, we don't use uh like our wallets to, uh, for so the employees don't use their wallets to connect to uh, the smart contract um, yeah i think just to add up on yeah, that uh, yeah. okay. okay yeah so if you think about the logic the employee shouldn't be charged for any type of transaction every transaction that you make uh, will cost you right it will cost you some amount of it and for the agreement between the employer and the employee, it's it should be up to uh, it should be up to the employer to uh, to handle all of the transactions between the employee's mobile application and the smart contract. So, what we need to do is we need to bundle the a private key of the employer or the owner of the contract into the mobile application, and no one should be able to access that. The, the same way that you would bundle secret keys mm -hmm. in your mobile application development. Yeah. Uh, I, I, can you rephrase this? I, I don't quite get it. Yeah, so uh, we will have one private key that has an ether or that has a balance, and okay. that private key should be bundled into the mobile application. So once you build your mobile application, no one should be able to extract that, even using reverse engineering or some other uh, methods. So mm -hmm. Uh, in mobile app development, especially on Android Studio and React Native, I'm not familiar with Flutter, but you can bundle secret keys into your application and no one will be able to extract that after being hashed into the mobile application. So for now, just mm -hmm. implement the logic that it would be based if you can also go uh, the extra step and encrypt or hash the private key and bundle that uh, when you build your mobile application, the final building of your mobile application so that the employee won't be charged for any transaction that's going to be sent from the mobile application okay it, it makes sense uh but like i have uh, another 
question. Uh, so like, how do we uh, like uh, differentiate uh, employees or uh, like, yeah, how do we like yeah. identify an employee? In this, in this application, uh, there yeah. is only one employee. Okay. Specifically one employee and mm -hmm. uh, one employer uh, mm -hmm. during our projects. But I yeah. think yours is to implement different employees, to register different employees into one code base. I think it's like that. Okay, so do we, so when we develop the app, like we have to uh, like pre-encode, uh, I mean, or register all the employees and uh, give them a key. Uh, I don't quite. Not, not a can. key, but yes, what yeah. you can do is you can track. Okay, sorry, go on, Abby. I don't know, go on, go on, Abby. Okay, so what you can do is you can have a list of your employees' public key because since this is going to be a smart a Web3 application, uh, yes. every employee will have their own public key. So maybe the employer will register uh, or add the employee's public key. So every time a transaction is being sent from the mobile application, we'll track them based on their public key. So okay. all of the logic that's happening on the back end or the smart contract implementation will be based on the employee's public address. So the mapping, the one that we've been discussing yesterday, the mapping between the employee's detail, the coordinates and the agreed, the agreed distance location uh, from the center will all be stored based on the employee's public address. Okay, okay. Okay, so like we will use uh, a one uh, like private key bundled with the application and like a bunch of uh, public keys of the employee to interact with our smart contract. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. The employee won't be charged at all for the application usage. Okay. And shouldn't be charged, right? So the, is it, there is a way of like doing, uh, like giving, uh, an application, uh, a single private key that could interact with the uh, smart contract and all the users with that uh, was with like registered public key uh, would benefit from that uh, key to like interact without getting charged. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 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 So I, I don't know like how it is implemented, but like. We either discuss it later or like yes. I'll yes. figure that out. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Now it's clear. Okay, Edidia, um, I, I think yes. I okay. take too much time. Thank um, you, Abel, uh, by for, the way, for the lovely okay. presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Edidia? Okay. okay. I think uh, I take too much time. Sorry. No, 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 no problem. That was great. Okay. Thank you very much, yeah. Abel. So, uh, thank you for your time and your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay. So now we are going to go over the React Native implementation. Uh, We can't hear you if you're speaking. You're on mute. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I was on mute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. 
uh, okay, so let me go over what I've been seeing again. So uh, I'm going to walk you through the React Native implementation for the mobile application. Uh, so I use React Native for the implementation. React Native is another way uh, to build mobile apps. It's a cross-platform. So once you build your app, you can bundle it into Android application, iOS application, and even uh, web applications. Uh, and I use the lighter version of React Native, which is Expo. Expo is the lighter version of React Native. So you don't have to go and install uh, Android Studio in some other uh, big tools that you'll be uh, that will be needed for your environment setup. So uh, I was showing you the Expo documentation. Expo is the lighter version of React Native. Once you install Expo uh, on your local machine globally, you can just ins instantiate a new application and uh, start working on your application. Let's log in. So you can go over the docs and I think Expo's documentation is also very great and uh, really good to uh, following tool, I will share a link. Uh, so, especially for those of you that are already familiar with React, with React development on for the front end, I highly recommend you to start using React Native because it's almost uh, identical with React implementation. You have the same uh, code structure that you would use in React development, and you just have to change a very minor uh, section in your code, especially on the navigations and some other concepts when using React Native. But other than that, uh, it's almost identical. So when you, when you initialize a new project, you will get an app.js. Maybe let me. Uh, so you'll first you'll have you'll first need to install the Expo CLI on your local machine. You'll need Node.js for that. Same way that uh, you'd in you'd install you'd install uh, your you'd in uh, initialize a React. Uh, project on your local machine. So once you have installed Expo CLI on your local machine, you will need Expo Go mobile application. So uh, one thing you can do is you can also use emulators. Uh, and the other thing in the simpler one is to use the Expo Go. So Expo Go is a mobile application that's available in uh, Play Store as well as App Store for iOS. And you can just install the application and your mobile application can connect with your uh, local development environment using, uh, but you just can connect that using uh, a same network for both the local machine and your mobile application. And the initialization is straightforward and very simple, and it won't take too much of your time. So after ins after installing the expo, you can then uh, also install the mobile application and just connect that. It's as simple as that. So after initializing, uh, one thing you might find different from React is there, there are the navigators. There are different versions of navigators in React Native. So the navigators are uh, are one that will take uh, some kind of prop from one screen to another. For example, in my case, I've used a login screen. And from the login screen, uh, the employee will be forwarded or redirected to the home page. So, the navigator will be the one handling all of that. So in React, I think there is the React router and some other logics, but in React Native, we will have to use uh, the different navigators that are available. So uh, I use the official React, na React Native navigation. So after installing that uh, using the root, uh, the using the root stack, uh, the main thing that's being rendered on the home page or on the app component is the root stack. So on the root stack, I bundle the uh, I bundled the login screen in the home screen. So uh, let's go to the root stack. OK, so in the root stack, there is the login component as well as the welcome components. The welcome component is the home screen. Uh, and there are some styling. I used uh, styling in React Native. So uh, what I want to do is both we are bundling, we are adding the uh, login component as well as the uh, home screen component on the navigation container. So the navigation container will be uh, aware of all of the different pages that you are going to navigate within the application. So you might have different screens in our application. And when navigating between those screens, we might, we might need to pass some kind of props when uh, navigating from one screen to the another. So uh, navigators in React Native will be able to handle that. 
So uh, the first one is going to be the logging component that's going to be rendered on the uh, on the first when someone just uh, opens the application and on the login screen uh, the login screen is in screens okay so, so uh, in the login component that's under the screens directory uh, it's the forget about the styling i think you can use the template so what this is what this is doing is i've used the scroll view so that the user will be able to scroll throughout the page and uh, i've used uh, a library called formic for the styling and formatting of the uh, screen or of the page that is being rendered uh, and uh, what the user is required to pass or what the employer is required to pass to to get started using the application is uh, his public address so the app will prompt the user or the employee to enter his public address so we'll be tracking the user based on uh, his or her public address and once uh, he passes his public address that will be stored and then uh, he can get started so all of this is just the styling in different uh, event listeners you can forget about this section and just uh, focus on uh, getting the public address from the employee and passing that to the next screen. And finally, the next the next screen should be able to uh, interact with the smart contract. So on press, finally, after there is going to be a single input, uh, this is commented out. So I will only have uh, a single input box, which will take the public address from the employee. Then uh, there is uh, a get started button. As you can see, there is a get started button. So once the employee clicks the get started button, uh, we can use the navigation.navigate to the welcome screen. So the navigation will handle the different screens that we defined in the root stack. So based on the name of the, uh, the different screens, we are going to navigate to the second screen, which is the welcome screen. And uh, as a prop, we are passing the address that, uh, that was passed on the homepage or on the uh, login screen of the application. So we are passing using React navigation, we are passing the address as values.public address. So the values was, uh, okay, I haven't used state, yes. Mm, okay, yeah, so the values is also being passed once the user, uh, once the user puts his or her public address on the text input and I can access that values and from the values, I'm passing the public address to the next screen, which is the welcome screen. And on the welcome screen, uh, what I implemented was, so on React Native or Expo package, we can use the background fetch. So what a background fetch is that uh, the mobile, the application will be able to interact with the task manager of the mobile application. So once the user uh, quits from the application, uh, the application will be able to send the coordinates of the user on the specified time interval. So this is the same implementation that most applications use. Uh, even if you haven't opened the app, they will be able to send some kind of uh, alert or notification or something at some uh, given time interval. They might remind you of something or so on. So at some given interval that we have defined, the application will be able to send the coordinates to uh, to the smart contract. So uh, to be able to implement that, there is the Expo Background Fetch package. So the Expo Background Fetch package will be able to interact with the task manager of your, mob, of your mobile application. So this is some low-level implementation that's behind the Expo Background Fetch and the Expo Task Manager. And uh, on the Task Manager, what we can do is we can define. So the first thing is we can define the minimum interval uh, for this task to run. So I've defined it uh, 60 times 55 times 60, which is going to be five hours. So uh, it will send the it will send the coordinates of the user uh, or of the employee every five hours. So we can also alter that or uh, change that to match to our agreement condition on our smart contract uh, implementation. Then the task manager, using the task manager, we can define the logic that should be implemented in uh, in the background of the application. So what that will do is for the first time, it will first ask uh, a permission to enable uh, access to the location. So unless the user accepts the location 
uh, agreement or uh, the mobile application to access the user's location, uh, this will fail. So if the status is not granted, we are sending an error called permission uh, with message permission to access location was denied. If not, we can continue to the rest of the code. So first we are going to fetch the current position. So what this code will do is when this code fetches the location, it will return, uh, yes, return type. This is what it's going to return. It's going to return a JSON with codes uh, key, then this is also going to be uh, another JSON which will hold the altitude, the altitude accuracy, the latitude, the accuracy, the longitude, and uh, some other things. We can also see that the speed of the uh, of the user. And then we also have the timestamp. One great thing that you can also get is the timestamp. So we can have the altitude, the longitude, the latitude, and other important metrics which uh, like timestamp, which we will need to verify uh, on our smart contract implementation. So using this, we can send this information to our smart contract and thus our smart contract will be able to uh, verify that and uh, check if the user or the employee has complied with the agreement or not. Uh, and then uh, to, connect with, uh, to connect with the smart contract, uh, in React Native or React Native, you can use the ETHERS package. You can just install that package, uh, the ETHERS package, and just start using that. Uh, you'll also need to use the ETHERS project slash shims before uh, importing the ETHERS package. This is required. I don't know why, but this is specified on their documentation. So we'll first need to pull the ETHERS project slash shims, then we can import the ETHERS. This is, uh, I think, specific to React Native. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, if there is a difference, th there is a difference on other mobile application development, but uh, on React Native or Expo, uh, this is required. Uh, we are required to import the ethers project slash shims, then we can import the ethers. So using ethers, we can be able to interact with our smart contract. So the first thing that we are going to we are going to initialize is the providers using the ring PRPC URL. Uh, so uh, for this implementation, I used Ring P, and when I just tried that uh, earlier in the morning today, this has been deprecated, and the nodes that the smart contract was deployed on uh, aren't running uh, anymore. So I think I have to uh, uh, migrate to another network, to other test net, uh, to be able to implement or to, uh, for this app to work uh, successfully. So. After is after insta after initializing the uh, ethers provider, the next thing that you can do is signing the contract. So the same way that we have been using on our ground and uh, other Wave three projects, uh, we should sign the contract. So to to sign the contract, we need the private key and the provider. So here we are providing, or we need to provide the uh, the employers or the agreed uh, address that that isn't the employee's uh, private address or pr private key. So we can store that safely uh, in our application and use that private key. I think I imported that, yes. So from, I used React Native.env package and from that I imported private key in ring RPC URL. So there, this is something that you can also find for Grayly. Once you sign up in Alchemy and other uh, providers, you'll, you'll be able to find the uh, provider's URL. So after using the private key in the provider, our transaction has been signed. Then the next thing that you can do is we'll initialize, we'll initialize a new ETHERS contract and we need to provide the address of the contract. So uh, this is how we are going to connect with our smart contract. We, the first thing that we are going to pass is the contract address. Uh, this address is the contract's deployment address. So once you deploy our smart contract, that will return an address and we are going to use that address. The second thing is the ABI. The ABI is uh, something that's, that we can find in, uh, that you can find as a JSON file and we'll use the ABI, which will hold all of the logic of our smart contract implementation. Then the signer just to, fail, to verify that our contract has been signed. Uh, and then we can uh, call the methods that are available in, on our smart contract. So to just show you the high level overview, there is the ingest coordinate method that I used on the smart contract implementation. So the ingest coordinate will be able to ingest the coordinate of the employee, and that's available on the contract that we used above. So I'm passing uh, uh, the latitude as an integer, the longitude as an integer, 
and then the date a fun teacher after parsing that out. I just I'm just I just parsed the hour of the day, then I'm passing that as an integer. Then uh, we can also continue the rest of the logic to just uh, listen for transaction mine. And uh, once our transaction has been mined and has been successfully uh, added to the node or to the chain, we can then uh, make sure that it has been verified. So the the other logic is just I I use a test now function. So <laughs> we want to when we want to demo or present that uh, maybe on next week. We can't wait uh, for five hours to be able to see the results of our uh, of our mobile application and if they actually will send the latitude, the, the longitude, and the timestamp from the mobile application. So to just test it right away, uh, we can use once the user touches a button, we can uh, call all of the logics that you have seen above, and this section will be implemented. And the same logic will be applied to, uh, which will just ingest the location from the user, from the mobile application, then install, initialize the provider, then sign the transaction, and on the contract, call the, the available methods uh, on the contract and ingest the temperature, not the temperature, the longitude, the latitude, and other required metrics. So this is just, the, you can use the rest of the logic, but for the smart contract connect and the smart contract implementation, you'll have to use your own logic and just feel free to use this template or even build your own. I don't think it's that hard. And on the website, so uh, as you have said, the admin or the employer should be able to uh, uh, manage uh, the different employees that he has or uh, she has. Uh, so, what the admin can do is the admin can create the employees. So the employees, the admin can track each employee by using his or her public address. So uh, if we go to, uh, maybe let me just show you the, uh, the home page of the admin panel. I can't connect, I can't show the employees in the rest of logic because I've been, I was using the ring P testnet, but uh, I think if you can switch to the, Gorilla, uh, the logic will be uh, the same. So the first thing that we can do is we can connect to the MetaMask. To be able to connect to the MetaMask, there is the navbar uh, under components, navbar. So here, uh, forget about the styling. This is just, uh, I've been using the style component and so on. You can use the template again for the web application, but just implement your own logic for uh, the interaction with the smart contract. So uh, on the nav bar, this, we are going to use the same logic that we've been using on, on our grant. If we, if we have the MetaMask installed, already installed, uh, that the MetaMask will be injected into our web browser and we can directly access that uh, on our web application. So what we can check is we will have on the global package, which is the window, we'll have the Ethereum object under the window uh, global object, then if you have the Ethereum dot request and the method will be it request accounts. If this is successful, this means that we have MetaMask installed. If not, uh, we can log the error. Uh, so th what the user will do is there should be a connect button. Uh, there should be connect. Yes, so on click, the connect function is being called. So uh, this is the connect button and on click, the connect function is being called and this is the function. So if window.etherm exists, uh, this will proceed and this logic will be impl implemented. If not, uh, install MetaMask extension alert will pop up. So uh, I will connect, let me refresh the app and connect to MetaMask. And now we are connected. So uh, after being connected to the MetaMask, we can use the same logic that we have used on the React Native implementation. So for example, let me just show you the create employee uh, uh, 
component in inside create employee yes the first thing that i did was to import the abi in the contract address we will always need the abi in the contract address when interacting with a smart contract uh, and then yes so on submit so the user will be required uh, the admin will be required to enter the name of the employee the address this address is the public address in the latitude range that that's acceptable in the longitude range that's acceptable for the employee in the allowed distance so for a certain latitude and for a certain longitude uh, we'll give the latitude the longitude and the allowed distance and all of the calculation will be implemented in the smart contract and we'll track the employee by using his or her address then on click or on submit yes there should be a button yes on submit uh, we'll call uh, this function so the same logic that we have used on the React Native will first initialize the provider by using the iters, then the provider, with the provider, then we'll be signing. What makes it different from the, from the mobile application here is that we are using MetaMask for signing each transaction. We are not statically using the private key. But since we have the MetaMask, we can directly use the MetaMask, and the MetaMask, employ, uh, the MetaMask extension will pop up, and uh, we'll have to enter our password and agree to the conditions. And finally, after the contract has been, after the transaction has been signed, signed we can now initialize the ethers.contract with the address, the ABI, and the signature. And finally, we can create the available methods on our smart contract. So one of the available methods is to create an employee. So we are giving the employee's address, the employee's name, the latitude, the longitude, and the distance that's allowed. And on the smart contract, we are checking if that condition has been met or not, and the compliance status will be updated based on uh, the employee's location. Yeah, I think this was it. Uh, I don't think we have shared the web application. If you guys also want to use the web uh, template, we can share that. Mm. Under that, or Fasa, Fasa. Uh, how, what type of timestamp was that? I didn't uh, fully understand. Uh, okay, yeah. So the timestamp that you are that you are going to get from the location library. Sorry. So the timestamp that you are going to get from the location library in Expo is looks like this this is a time sub that will contain the year the month the day and the time uh, of that specific uh, duration so you can extract the hour from this timestamp like uh, yes you can first uh, initialize the new date and in the date you can parse it and get the location type stamp and there is the gate hours that you can call on that so this will return the hour of the day. Okay, uh, so the second question would be, if you would be kind enough to go to welcome.js file, okay. if you can, please. Line uh, 65 was it, I think. Okay. And I, yeah, it was this. Uh, this private key is the private key of the... Of the employer or the agreed address because we are not we will not use the address the private key of the employee we'll always be using uh, the employers it's going to be up to the organization or the employer to uh, to be charged for all of the transaction yes what about the provider that was my key question i didn't quite understand what exactly is the provider okay so the provider is directly related to your network that you are going to use so uh, we've been mm. mostly using ring and robston and other networks but in your case since those networks are deprecated you'll be using the gorilla so if you go to alchemy or other uh, sites you can uh, just sign up and get the uh, the url for those networks okay but this this technically means and um, if we are developing on our local machine using the ganache environment that's going to be basically our provider, right? Yes, th that's going to be your provider, but there is one additional step that you need to follow when connecting to Ganache, because 
uh, your local machine as well as your mobile application, especially if you are using uh, a network to connect your mobile application to your uh, provider, that's going to be a bit tricky because localhost isn't localhost in your mobile application, right? Yeah, it is a virtual kind of thing. So yes, so that, that will have a different yeah. address, and I think you'll need to figure that out, but I think uh, that's on the internet. But you yeah, need to but go exactly. one additional step. Okay. Yeah, so the additional step is going to be added because this virtual, uh, this uh, mobile network, this mobile uh, emulator is like a virtual uh, thing, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I think there is one question that is uh, critical. And if you can please be kind enough to answer that also. Mm. I think she can ask. That's why she didn't uh, say she can't raise her hand. OK. Who was that? It was to this day, I think. OK, what about my question? Uh, value calls values. Typing here. What can it use to send? Uh, okay, I'm not exactly sure uh, if I get your question, but are you referring to sessions and local storage on Web2 that you can use to store uh, some data on the web router? Take a thing. Hello. Ah, uh, hey, take a uh, Hi. Just uh, I wanted to store the employees' uh, detail once he uh, logged into the system, uh, there is a need to, to store his detailed information, just like his uh, address uh, timely to update to the contract. Uh, but uh, I don't know if we supposed to create a contract and to get his uh, information, his address, and uh, it will be uh, location. Okay. And, yeah. uh, verify to the contract but if we need to update or to verify timely as long as he uh, active in the system uh, i need to deal with the uh, session data or the time data store and to uh, send to the contract okay That's okay why. yeah i think I, yeah uh, if i get your question why would you need to store those informations on your uh web storage because you can directly send that to the smart contract and the smart contract can implement all of the logics that you need uh, from the smart contract, right? So basically on web two, you need to store some kind, you might need to cache or even store some kind of values on your web browser so that you'll be able to access that uh, on different scenarios. But here we want to send those coordinates and uh, all of the important uh, <laughs> all of the important logics to our smart contract directly without even storing that on another storage. So we won't even need a database or other, uh, or other storage for this case. The smart contract will be able to handle all of the logics. The smart contract will be able to handle all of the employees' information. So on the admin side, the admin can add employees and also edit the employees or so on. So our smart contract is going to be basically our storage. Uh, right? Can or am I, I getting it? it? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, for example, let's say uh, the employee is in the uh, allowed range and we track okay. his address. He, we track his address and he's on the uh, agreement range or in the contract range or in the allowed in the allowed uh, area, but after a while, he may leave that uh, location. And mm. when we track his address at the first time, we can verify or send his uh, addresses to the to the the smart track for further ver verification. Yes. But yes. after a while, he may leave that location. So. We yes. need to uh, 
we need to verify every time or every minute or every second. Yes. So that's why I need to store uh, or okay. So uh, to get this information. Uh, okay. Yeah. This time. Yeah, I think from my implementation, my implementation might not be perfect and. I really don't recommend you to follow the exact same implementation because we need to get new ideas and new ways of implementing this uh, challenge. So what I did was to send the data or the coordinates and other uh, relevant matrices to the smart contract every five hour. So every five hour, our smart contract, our mobile application will be sending those coordinates to our smart contract. So every time we have been discussing about that uh, yesterday and what we said we, you can use different approaches but one thing that you can do is if the agreement has been violated uh, even once you can terminate that agreement so you just need one violation or one time that the employee won't comply with the agreement and you will terminate or in the smart contract that for that specific employee and that employee won't get refunded and in the other okay. approach that you can use, maybe you can check for three, for three, uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can check for, uh, for about three times. So you might have a state to store that as well. So for each employee, you might use mapping or other uh, data types on your smart contract. And if, if the employee is not complying for more than three times, then you can terminate the contract or the agreement. So you won't need to store that information on your local machine or uh, the mobile application or the web application. All of the state handling okay. and the interaction can be uh, can be uh, handled by the smart contract. Okay, I will not see that. Uh, where is that? Or uh, the method you use to track every five hours? Mm. Okay, so I use the background fetch task. So this will be run or this will be called every five hours. This is specific to React Native or Expo, but I'm sure there are some other packages for Flutter or uh, other mobile application development tools. So this method will call the background fetch uh, on the task manager every five hours and the background fetch will ingest the location then uh, call the smart contract method that we've built. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think this has been shared. And if you're interested in using React Native, uh, you can look into it. You can upgrade the code, change the code, uh, or just go on use your logic. Okay, uh, any other question? Antoinette. Yeah, uh, it's uh, quite interesting to see how uh, React Native is very similar to uh, React. Uh, from your demonstration, I've never used uh, React Native, but